2017 CF 15684, State v. Nelson, back from our recess. Ms. Burdick, is State ready to proceed? Mr. Who's doing cross to the next one? Mr. Lar? Yes. Is defense ready? All right, Mr. Nelson, are you ready? Yes, sir. All right. Let's bring in the jury, please. Ms. Burdick, does the state acknowledge the jury? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Lar, defense? No, Your Honor. Mr. Nelson? Yes. Ms. Burdick, please call the next witness for the state. Kenneth Bowen. Thank you. Please <clears throat> for the testimony of Kenneth Bowen. Thank you. Hear about the give and be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, say help you God. Sir, please state and spell your first and last name for Madam Court Reporter. It's uh, Kenneth Bowen, B-O-W-E-N. Thank you. Ms. Burdick. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Could you please tell the court and the members of the jury how you are employed? I'm a detective with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. How long have you been with that agency? 22 years. Back on October 1st of 2017, uh, were you assisting Central Florida enforcement in locating a uh, suspect by the name of Scott Nelson? Yes. And were you able to locate Mr. Nelson on October 1st of 2017? Yes. Where was he located? In the uh, Sunshine Motel on uh, New Kings Road in Jacksonville. Would that be 5830 New Kings Road? Yes. In Jacksonville? And uh, was he, is that a motel? Yes, it is. Right, was there a particular room there uh, where he was located and registered as a guest? It was room 20, I believe. All right. 20 or uh, 120? 120, excuse me. All right. While you were at that location, um, did it become known to you that the individual inside uh, room 120 wanted to speak with an officer on the phone? Yes. All right. Uh, did you take over or did you initiate a phone call into room 120 or was the call initiated from room 120 somewhere else? The call had come from room 120 uh, to the owner, operator of the hotel, and he flagged me down and said the, he had the occupant of or room 120 on the phone, so I walked up, and actually it was a cordless phone, so I had to stand at the office uh, to not get out of range of the cordless phone. All right. Did the person on the phone identify themselves at all? Yes. As? Scott Nelson. All right. And uh, what did Mr. Nelson say to you on the phone? He said that he wanted to know uh, what, why, he was going, why we were there to arrest him, um, and I told him that he needed to come out and surrender, and then I would give him that information when he came out. All right. Did he reply? Yes, he said that he needed time to uh, smoke a cigarette, so we agreed uh, to get off the phone for a few minutes. I told him I'd call him back in 10 minutes, and uh, so I got off the phone with him. All right. Did he say he had anything with him in the room so that you would not uh, breach the entry there? Yes, he, he advised that he had a gun, and that uh, he, he had a gun, and we should not come in the room. You said that you were going to give him 10 minutes uh, to think about surrendering? Did yes. You, did you give him that time? Yes. What happened after 10 minutes passed? Uh, when I talked to him again after 10 minutes, he started stalling for more time, again, asking the reason that we were there. Um, so I told him that, you know, I was a man of my word, and I would take him, I was hoping he was going to be a man of his word, and that we made a deal. Um, it was time for him to live to that deal, so he needed to come out and surrender now. Now, this location uh, where Mr. Nelson was located, is it near the Amtrak station at 3570 Clifford Lane? Yes, I would say it's probably a half in the, half in the Amtrak. All right. If I may uh, publish Exhibit 24 in evidence? Yes. <clears throat> document that's already been introduced into evidence as 24 uh, and identified uh, as a, an ATM photo. Are you familiar, just at, in looking at this, at the location depicted in the background of the photo? Yes. And uh, where do you know that to be? It's a Wells Fargo near 1600 North Main Street in Jacksonville. 
Where is that in relation to the uh, either the Amtrak station or the Sunshine Inn? I would say it's probably between five and seven miles. All right. Quite a distance if somebody's on foot? Yes. After the uh, 10 minutes elapsed and you had the initial conversation, the additional conversation with uh, Mr. Nelson uh, and told him you were a man of your word and he needed to be one as well. Did he surrender? Yes, he did. All right. Without further incident? Yes, without incident. All right. After that point, was he taken to the uh, Jacksonville Police Station or the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office? I'm not sure. What it's, the, it's the Sheriff's Office. Jurisdiction yes. is there. Yes. Uh, to await uh, the arrival of detectives from Winter Park. Yes. All right. No other questions of the witness, Your Honor. Thank you. Cross examination. When y'all finally went into the room, you didn't find any gun. You didn't find any gun, did you? Uh, we, we didn't go in the room. He came out and surrendered, and then he verbalized that he had never had a gun. It was just a bluff. Redirect. Just one question. Uh, I neglected to ask you, the individual that you had contact with on October 1st of 2017, is he in the courtroom? Yes, ma'am. Could you point him out, please? Describe what he, where he is and what he's wearing. He's in the striped suit seated between the uh, two attorneys right here. All right. The record will reflect he's identified the defendant, Scott Nelson. No other questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Laura, any recross on that? No, Your Honor. All right. Detective, you step down. Thank you. And Ms. Burdick, please call the next witness for the state. John Holmquist. Thank you. You solemnly swore to testimony here about to give me the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so God. Yes. Sir, please state and spell your first and last name for Madam Court Reporter. John Holmquist, J-O-H-N-H-O-L-M-Q-U-I-S-T. Thank you. Ms. Burdick. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Could you please tell the court and the members of the jury how you are employed? I'm employed as a uh, crime laboratory analyst in the crime scene section of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement at the Jacksonville Regional Operations Center in Jacksonville, Florida. All right. What sort of training uh, or background do you have that qualified you for that position with FDLE? I have a um, bachelor's degree from the University of North Florida. And then I was um, trained and successfully completed the Florida Department of Law Enforcement Crime Scene Training Program. Mr. Jones, can we just approach John briefly? Yes. May I continue? Yes. All right. Were you uh, answering a question? I think I had finished. Okay. How long have you, or had you, how long have you been employed by the Florida Department of Law Enforcement in the capacity that you uh, explained? I've been um, a crime laboratory analyst in the crime scene section uh, approximately 26 years. In connection with your employment then with FDLE, were you asked to uh, assist uh, Central Florida jurisdiction, uh, specifically the Winter Park Police Department, in uh, first documenting um, items of evidence as it relates to a, an individual by the name of Scott Nelson? Yes. Were you asked to go to the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office on 10-1 of 2017 and photograph Mr. Nelson? Yes. If I may approach the witness, Your Honor. Yes. Starting as CH, 
I C J Yes. All right, if I may, I'm going to start over. I'll be approaching the witness with CH, CI, CJ, CK. Looks like CI again, CM, CN, CO, CP, CQ. CS, CT, and CU for identification. If you would take a look at the photographs contained in this folder and tell me if uh, these are photographs of somebody identified to you as Scott Nelson taken on October 1st, 2017. Without objection, what's been marked for identification as stated by Ms. Burick on the record will be admitted into evidence starting with State's Exhibit 66 and consecutively numbered as determined by a member. CN 72, C 
So these photographs of Mr. Nelson uh, were taken first with the clothing items that he was wearing at the time that he was apprehended, correct? Or at least at the time you saw him in the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. That is correct. He was dressed. That is correct. All right. And then um, as you continued to uh, document evidence, you asked him uh, to remove articles of clothing so that you could document the condition of his body. Correct. Is that accurate? Yes. All right, and uh, showing you 66 for the record, could you describe what we're looking at? Uh, this is uh, Scott Nelson. Um, as um, I first came into contact with him, um, and the first photograph that I took of him. Right, this is a full length front, uh, frontal shot of Mr. Nelson? Yes. At 67 in evidence, is that uh, side view, same individual taken in sequence? And yes, that's his right side. <clears throat> Uh, this would be the right side of his face and neck and partial shoulder. And 72 uh, this is the left side of his face, um, left, his left neck and, and shoulder area. Uh, this would be the back of his right hand. The um, palmer surfaces, surface of his left hand. This also includes his wrist of his left hand? Yes. Documenting an injury at the edge of the photograph? That's correct. Uh, this is um, a photograph of his right arm and hand and uh, partial chest area and abdomen area. This would be uh, his right fore, or excuse me, his left forearm. Right now, what are you documenting with this photograph? Uh, there's some, uh, looks like a couple scratches uh, on his forearm. 71 in evidence. Uh, his left chest. And what are you documenting in this photograph? Again, there's a, there's a mark there, um, just above the ruler. His uh, left and right legs, the front, his legs, and, and uh, you can see a little bit of his, his uh, foot. 
That's a medium shot of his right leg and the um, scratches on his leg. This is his left leg, the front of his left leg, again, documenting the scratches. This is the back of his left and right legs, um, from about the thigh down to his feet. What are you documenting in this image? The, the scratches and injuries on both his legs. Yes. Are these close-ups of those glasses in 79? Yes. Were you asked to assist uh, the authorities again on October 2nd of 2017 in executing a search warrant in room 120 of the Sunshine Inn in Jacksonville, Florida? Yes. All right. What were your responsibilities at that location? Uh, to uh, document the scene and to collect any potential evidence. If I may approach the witness, Your Honor, with what's been marked as states CU, CV, C W C X C Y C Z D as in dog A D B D C D D D E and D F for identification. They've all been shown to the business. They have. Okay, go ahead. Are those uh, images that you took on October 2nd of 2017 at the Sunshine Inn in Florida? Myself or my partner would have taken those. You recognize them as fair and accurate depictions of uh, the condition of the room as well as evidence items contained in the room. Yes. Your Honor, at this point, I would seek to introduce the reference order to the identification of the evidence. No. All right, without objection, uh, what's been marked for identification as indicated by Ms. Burdick on the record will be admitted into evidence uh, starting as State's Exhibit 80 and being consecutively numbered as determined by Madam Clerk. I thought we were, I thought we already had a 79. Starting in states exhibit 80 and consecutively numbered as determined by Madam Clerk. CU is 80. CV 81. CW 82. CX 83. CY, 84. CZ, 85. CA, 86. CB, 87. DC, 88. DD, 89. CE, 90. CE, 91. CZ, 
Mission to publish, Your Honor. Granted. Showing you first 80 in evidence. Is this the exterior of room 20 at the Sunshine Inn? Room 120, yes. 81 in evidence. Is this uh, what you saw as soon as you opened that door? Yes. 82 in evidence. Is this the condition of the room as you enter? Yes. 83 in evidence. Is this a close-up of a, a duffel bag that was located on the table in the room? Yes. 84 in evidence. An even closer view of that same uh, duffel bag? Yes. Are there evidence items inside the duffel bag that you uh, Yes, there was. Would that include what is shown in 85 in evidence? Yes. An Amtrak e-ticket travel document? Yes. And 86 in evidence, the purchase receipt for the same date and time? Yes. Those were inside the double bag? Yes, they were. I'm going to show you what's already been introduced into evidence as State 64 and also show you what's been marked as R for identification. Do you recognize the items in the uh, clear evidence bags? I do. I would seek to introduce R for identification and evidence. That objection must be marked for identification of states R as admitted in evidence as states exhibit 92. Uh, it's a nightstand that is on the left side of the bed, and on the nightstand is um, a phone, some cigarettes, ashtray, a wallet. Did you uh, collect that wallet? Yes. Showing you 89 in evidence. Is this that same wallet uh, with the uh, billfold expanded? Yes, it is. All right. And in this document, you have not removed any of the items contained within the wallet, correct? That's correct. Showing you 90 in evidence. Is this a photograph of the items that were in the wallet um, with, the, with them now removed? Yes. And they would include, as shown in 91 in evidence, the uh, photo identification card of Scott Edward Nelson. And they
Okay. Yes. Approach with one more item introduced into evidence as 44. This is a positive exhibit consisting of two pages. Uh, do you recognize that to be the front of the bus pass that we saw in the other photograph? Yes. And page two is this the back of that same bus pass? Um, I, I would have to check my photographs. I don't remember taking a photograph of that. Yeah. If I may, if I may, if I may. I don't remember taking that photograph. I'm sure it's, um, I don't have a copy of that photograph. Do you want to start? I think you started off talking about when you were photographing Mr. Nelson. So I just want to ask you a couple of questions about that first. Um, that was at the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, right? Yes. So that was after Mr. Nelson's arrest. I don't know if he was under arrest at that point or not. He'd at least been detained and brought there by the law, by law enforcement. Is that right? Yes. Um, and to take those photographs, it required him to remove his clothing and provide them to you. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And he did all of that on his own. There was no force needed or a lack of cooperation or anything like that. No. Okay. And, um, uh, during that time you, he, well, you were aware that he wears a, a colostomy bag. Is that correct? Yes. The, and the glasses that are photographed had to be returned to him so that he could see. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So then let's talk about just briefly about the hotel room. Um, you, you or your partner took all of the photos that we saw. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And um, you ultimately collected all of those items as well. That's correct. And you essentially ended up collecting everything in the hotel room except things that the hotel told you belonged to them. Is that right? No. I mean, there were things in the garbage that we didn't collect. Okay. But you took all the towels and all the items on the tables and looked under the bed and took anything and everything that you could have taken. Is that accurate? We took a lot of things. But okay. I'm not sure if I'd categorize it as everything and anything. Okay. Well, you did a thorough search of the of the hotel room, right? Yes. Okay. And um, in that thorough search and photograph and documentation of everything that was there, there was no firearm. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. And um, there also were no ATM or debit cards in the name of Jennifer Fulford. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Um, may I just have one moment, Judge? Yes. Did they 
Redirect. All right, sir, you can step down. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Hicks, yes, call sir. the next witness for the state. Yes, the state will call Craig Bedard. Thank you. Do you solemnly swear to testimony here about the gives will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, say up to God. I do. Sir, please state and spell your first and last name for Madam Court Reporter. My name is Craig Bedard, first name C-R-A-I-G, last name Bedard, B-E-D-A-R-D. Thank you. Ms. Hicks? Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Can you please tell us how you are employed? I am the asset protection manager for Walmart. And how long have you been an asset protection manager for Walmart? Uh, I've been an asset protection manager since... Uh, May of this year. And had you worked in asset protection with Walmart prior to that? Yes, ma'am. How long, uh, what, what did you do prior to that? I was an asset protection associate. Okay. And how long, so how long in total have you worked for Walmart? Uh, three and a half years. Okay. Three and a half years. And you still work for them? I do. What Walmart do you currently work at? Mount Dora. And did you previously work at the Walmart located at 301 West Princeton Street in Orlando? Yes, ma'am. And were you working at that Walmart on Princeton Street at, as an asset protection? Associate. Associate, okay. Um, in uh, November of 2017? Yes, ma'am. All right. Can you just tell the jurors briefly what, and what you do in asset protection, whether you're a supervisor or a manager, what do you do? Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, Asset protection, we uh, are in charge in total of security, uh, safety, compliance, basically protecting the shareholders' interests for Walmart. Okay. And do you also uh, liaison with law enforcement when they would need access to information that Walmart would have? Yes, ma'am. Information like uh, information about purchases that have been made? Yes, ma'am. Information if there are uh, surveillance footage and cameras and such that like that? Yes, ma'am. And um, do you recall a time in November of 2017 when a detective with the Winter Park Police Department came to the Walmart on Princeton requesting information about a possible purchase made in September of 2017? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> and were you personally present when attempts were made to work with the law enforcement to, to locate the information they were seeking? Yes, ma'am. All right. And were you, uh, in fact, successful? I think you were working with somebody else as well, Timothy Stevens? Yes, ma'am. He was another asset protection manager with Walmart at the time? He was my supervisor, yes, ma'am. Okay. And were the two of you successful in being able to locate the information that was being sought by law enforcement? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Judge, I've already uh, shown defense counsel all of the evidence of the you can first Yes. So I'm going to show you what's been marked for identification as State's Exhibit D as a dog O. If you could take a look at this item. Do you recognize the various pages of this document that I've given to you? Yes, ma'am. Is this a document that you supplied to law enforcement back in November of 2017 pertaining to an event in September of 2017? Yes, ma'am. And can you please uh, tell the jury that uh, does Walmart keep, um, when a purchase is made at Walmart, does Walmart keep a record of that purchase? Yes, they do, ma'am. Do they, in fact, keep a record of all purchases made? Yes, ma'am. And do they do this in the regular course of business? Yes, ma'am. As an asset protection manager at the time, an asset uh, protection associate, do you have the capability to access such receipts when requested? Yes, ma'am. And is this a re is, is what you're holding there in your hands, I think it was DO, is this a receipt that you located when requested by the Winter Park Police Department? Yes, ma'am. And had that document been kept in the regular course of business by Walmart? Yes, ma'am. Judge, at this time, the statement was previously been marked by identification as State's Exhibit DO in 
Without objection, what's been marked for identification as state's DO is admitted in evidence as state's exhibit 93. Now, if this document that's now been entered into evidence as state's exhibit 93, this is a, a multi page document, correct? Yes, ma'am. And I want to look at right, the first, I want to look at the first couple pages of this document. So this would be page one and then page two. Can you tell the jury what these two pages are? Receipt. Okay. And can you tell us how this receipt was generated? By the customer's purchase. Okay. But is this exactly what it looked like when it was handed to the customer? No. This, this particular receipt is uh, generated through a system called Secure that is a uh, base system that we use to uh, do investigations. Okay. And so is this what uh, the document looks like when it was generated by you? based on this uh, event that we're talking about. Yes, ma'am. Right. Now I want to flip to the last page. And this is going to be a little difficult to read because it is small. Tell us what this is, please. That would be the customer receipt. OK. So is this more in line with what is actually handed to uh, the actual customer when they purchase stuff at Walmart? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, so these are, is it fair to say that these are two different versions, page one and two of this document, and then the last page of this document, is it fair to say that they are two different versions of the same thing? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, this, this last page of the document here, the items that are on this list, are they in the order in which they would have been scanned as, as the customer was purchasing things? Yes, ma'am. But the items on the, the first two pages, are they in the order in which they would have been scanned? No, that, that system doesn't place them in order. Okay. So if we wanted to look at the order in which something was purchased, we have to look at this last relatively small page. Yes, ma'am. Okay. But if we want to look at everything that was purchased, it might be a little easier to look at the first pages here. Yes, ma'am. Now, if you need to, I'm going to ask you several questions about this document and about this purchase receipt. So it might be easier for you to hold on to that there. with can you tell us the date of the transaction for this receipt that we're looking at? Uh, 2017, September 16th at 1620 hours. Okay, and what time is 1620? 420. So at 420 in the afternoon, this purchase was made on September 16th of 2017? Yes, ma'am. What was the total price? How much, what was the price that was paid? Uh, $498.79. And what was the method of payment? Check. Check. Okay, when somebody pays for something with a check, do they have to purchase, they have to provide a driver's license when they are paying by check? Yes, ma'am. And is it the responsibility of the cashier to confirm that the photo of in the driver's license matches the person that's standing in front of them? Yes, ma'am. And when the person provides the driver's license, is the cashier responsible for taking down the driver's license number? It's inputted into the keyboard. Yes, okay, well, that's what, and that was the next thing. They have to put it into the system? Yes, ma'am. And the system records that driver's license number? Yes, and is that driver's license number contained on this receipt that you're looking at? Yes, ma'am. Okay, before you read it, the state is going to publish State's Exhibit 91. Could you please tell us what the driver's license number is that was provided that is associated with this receipt? Uh, Florida, November 42578564680. Thank you.
Now, when a person pays by check, does the receipt record the bank routing number and the account number from the check that was used to make the purchase? Yes, ma'am. Judge, at this time, the state would move what has previously been marked for identification as state's exhibit DP into evidence. The state previously filed a business record uh, certification and intent to rely upon business record. Yeah. Right, without objection, what's been marked for identification as state's DP is admitted into evidence as state's exhibit 94. Yes, ma'am. And prior to reading that number into the record for us, the state is going to publish what has now been entered into evidence as State's Exhibit 94, which is a multi page document. And the specific page number, the bait stamp number that the state is going to be publishing, is page 448. Two six seven zero eight four one three one one nine six two six nine five nine eight. Now, does the Walmart at Princeton, does that have uh, surveillance cameras? Yes, ma'am. Now, do they have surveillance cameras over top of each point of sale? In other words, each cash register? Yes, ma'am. All right. And once you had identified that relevant receipt that we're talking about here, were you able to search for video surveillance that would have recorded that purchase? Yes, ma'am. And were you able to locate the surveillance? Yes, ma'am. And can you please explain to the jury, um, you have a lot of cameras at Walmart, is that fair to say? Yes, ma'am. And are they recording 24-7 or are they motion detected? 24-7, ma'am. And how are they, how is the information that is collected by those cameras, how is it stored? Uh, DVR slash cloud base. Okay, back in September of 2000 or September, October, November of 2017, was it DVR or cloud based or both? Both. Both, okay. And um, who has access to those recordings? Uh, all asset protection associates and management. Okay. So would you have been one of the people that had access to the recordings? Yes, ma'am. And you were able to locate a relevant recording that is related to that receipt, correct? Yes, ma'am. And were you able to download that footage onto some sort of thumb drive or disk for law enforcement? On a disk, yes ma'am. And did you provide that to law enforcement? Yes ma'am. Now prior to coming into court today, did you view a disk, a, a DVD, this disk here? Yes ma'am. Now we forgot to have you put your initials on here, but prior to coming into court, you and I watched this? Yes ma'am. All right. And you said that it says Princeton Walmart on there? Yes ma'am. All right. And prior to coming into court, you had an opportunity to watch this, does the uh, information on this disk match what you provided to law enforcement? Yes, ma'am. Now, you had multiple cameras that you, you had uh, footage from multiple different cameras that you provided to law enforcement? Yes, ma'am. And do you recognize that this is one long video that's been kind of edited together? All the different videos have been edited together to form a sequence of events? Yes, ma'am. All right, Judge, at this time, the state would move what has previously been marked for identification as DG into evidence? Ms. Moore. All right, without objection, what's been marked for identification as state's DG is admitted into evidence as state's exhibit 95. At this time, the state would seek to publish this video. Go ahead. This video is, I believe, approximately 
17 minutes long. The state intends to publish it in its entirety. Pause there for a moment. Sir, is this, uh, this, this video fairly and accurately is the video that is related to that receipt, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now we see somebody finishing up a purchase, but we see a gentleman behind there. Is the, the receipt goes with the next customer, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now in that video right there at the beginning, we saw somebody bring something and put it on the table there behind the cash register. Did you see that? Yes, ma'am. And uh, I know you maybe don't know exactly what the item was, but can you tell us, does your store have uh, some sort of policy related to knives? Yes, ma'am. And can you tell us, um, are knives that are in your store, like some like, well, I'll show you a photograph. Right? Show you what's been marked for identification as states is it DM. You recognize the knife in that photograph? Yes, ma'am. And is that uh, a knife that is sold in your store? Yes, ma'am. And would an object like that be accessible by any customer? Can you just walk in and, and take it? No, ma'am. How would you have to accomplish, if I wanted to purchase this knife, how would I accomplish that? Uh, you would get a sales associate. Um, those particular knives and other knives are on what we call locking pegs. Uh, the sales associate has a special key that would go over open it, remove the product, and bring it to the cash register for checkout. Okay, and so something like we just saw here in the video where a sales okay. Well, I'm going to overrule the objection until the question's finished, then if you have an objection. Okay. And so, <clears throat> as we saw in the video here, is that representative of something that would take place? Did we see a sales associate bring something to behind the cashier? Sustain the objection of the form of the question. We'll get back to that. Let's walk, continue watching the video. Sir, is this now the beginning of the transaction that is related to the receipt? Yes, ma'am. And are you able to identify what is being purchased at this point in the video? Yes, ma'am. I'll overrule the objection. Can you identify what is being at this point in the video? Those are cartons of cigarettes. Okay. And we've seen that one carton has already been scanned? Yes, ma'am. And how many other cartons are there? Four. Thank you. A total of five cartons, correct? Yes, ma'am. You can continue play.
So at this point, five items have been scanned, sir? Yes, ma'am. All right. And if we can pause it there, please. And did the cashier just scan the sixth item? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'll rule the objection. And where did that sixth item come from? On the cashier's table. Okay. And is that the item that was placed there by the Walmart associate earlier in the video? Yes, ma'am. I'll sustain the objection to that question. If we can switch over, please, to the Elma. Showing you what has been entered into evidence is States Exhibit 93. I'm using the last page. Now, this is the page that you said was the one that's in order of as, as it's being scanned, correct? Yes, ma'am. Now, this receipt relies on codes that are used by Walmart. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And it has barcode numbers next to it. UPC, UPC numbers. numbers, yes, ma'am. Can you please tell us what the sixth item was that was scanned on this receipt? It's a UST knife. Okay. And does Walmart still sell those types of knives? Well, let me let me put it to yeah. you this way: when you uh, back in November, when you met with law enforcement. Um, after you retrieved the receipt and the video for law enforcement, did you assist law enforcement with locating items within the Walmart? Yes, ma'am. Items that had been purchased on this receipt? Correct, ma'am. And was one of those items that you helped them locate the knife? Yes, ma'am. May I approach? Yes. To show you what's been marked for identification as states exhibit DM and DN, you can look at those two photographs. Mm -hmm. You recognize those? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And is that photographs of knives that were sold in your store? Yes, ma'am. Is, is this the knife that you helped law enforcement locate? Yes, ma'am. At this time, the state would move what's previously been marked for identification as DM and evidence? No objection. That objection has been marked for identification as state's DM as it been in evidence as state's exhibit 96. And what's been marked for identification as DN is admitted in evidence as state's exhibit 97. Evidence as states exhibit 97. And this one. This is the knife that you helped law enforcement locate, correct? Yes, ma'am. And this would be identical to the knife that was purchased on this receipt that we've been talking about. I'm going to sustain the objection of the form. Is, well, let's do it this way. The UPC, you said that there is a UPC barcode on the receipt that was purchased, that, the first receipt, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. If you could please read the UPC barcode for the night that was purchased on that receipt. Two zero six zero five. The receipt will show the last number identifier. It's Walmart barcode. There's a number before and after that won't show up on uh, tag. Unless I, I forgot my glasses. Where it says UST knife here as the fifth item purchased. Correct. And there's a long digit, this 815 number? Yeah, I'm sorry, I read the last digits to you. Okay, so you read the last digits to yes. us? Yes. Does that number there match the number that is on this knife that has been entered 
the photograph of this knife that has been entered into evidence at State's Exhibit 97. Yes, ma'am. I'll overrule that objection. So going back, does this photograph depict an image of the knife that was purchased with this receipt? Yes, ma'am. Once they're going to show 96, would this be just another photograph of that same knife? Yes, ma'am. The video, please.
It's a different camera angle in your store? Yes, ma'am. Is this the exit area of that Walmart? Is this the exit area of that Walmart? Yes, ma'am. This is outside in the parking lot. Yes, ma'am. Now, we talked about uh, earlier in your testimony that after the receipt had been identified and the video had been obtained, you assisted law enforcement with locating items that were purchased by the purchaser of this receipt, correct? Yes, ma'am. Was one of those items a pair of blue sneakers? Yes, ma'am. Show you what's been marked for identification as State's Exhibit DH. Do you recognize the blue sneakers in this photograph? Yes, ma'am. And is this representative of the blue sneakers that were bought by the person on September 16th? Yes, ma'am. At this time, the state group was previously marked for identification as State's Exhibit DH into evidence? Okay. Without objection, it's been marked for identification as DH. Is admitted in evidence as State's Exhibit 98? on the receipt that the purchaser purchased duct tape. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Purchased duct tape? Yes, ma'am. You assisted law enforcement with locating the exact same duct tape in your store? Yes, ma'am. I'll sustain the objection to it. Did you assist law enforcement with finding the duct tape that had been purchased on that receipt with duct tape that was in your store? Yes, ma'am. Show you what's been previously marked for identification in states exhibit DJ and DI. Can look at those. Are these photographs of the duct tape that was purchased uh, by on that receipt? Yes, ma'am. State would move what has been previously marked for identification as states exhibit DI and DJ into evidence? The objection was been marked for identification as DJ has been in evidence as State's Exhibit 99. It's been marked for identification as DI without objection is admitted in evidence as State's Exhibit 100. Yep. Publishing what's been entered into evidence as State's Exhibit 99. And When you were assisting law enforcement, were you confirming that the barcodes in the store matched the barcodes that were on the receipts? Yes, ma'am. For all of the items that we talked about? Correct, ma'am. And finally, I want to show you what's been marked for identification as states exhibits DL and DK. On the receipt, do we see uh, an item that states it's listed as Eighteen-inch cable tie. Yes, ma'am. And are what I have provided to you in these photographs of DL and DK are these uh, representative of what was purchased by that receipt? Yes, ma'am. And these match the barcode. Yes, ma'am. And these are the photographs of what you assisted law enforcement locating. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> this time, the state would move what has previously been marked for identification as states DL and DK into evidence. Without objection, what's been marked as identification as DL is admitted in evidence as State's Exhibit 101. And without objection, what's been marked for identification as DK is admitted in evidence as State's Exhibit 102. Publishing State's Exhibit 102. And 101. 
you know, the 18-inch cable ties that were bought by that purchaser? Yes, ma'am. What's been entered into evidence as states exhibit 96, this representative of the knife that was bought by that purchaser? Yes, ma'am. Cross-examination. All right, sir, you can step down. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Can counsel approach? All right, members of the jury, in just a moment, we're going to take our recess for the day. During the recess, you're going to continue to leave your notepads and your pens on your seats. You remain under all the court's instructions, including but not limited to the instruction not to discuss this case amongst yourselves or with anyone else. We'll plan to continue the presentation of the evidence tomorrow at 9 a.m. Um, again, thank you for your service, uh, especially with all of the technical difficulties and other uh, power issues that we had today. I just, again, express uh, my sincere appreciation for your service in this case. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Thank you. Can, can counsel please make sure we've had a lot of exhibits today before you uh, excuse can you make sure everything is is here that nobody has it on counsel table I know there's been things moving around so if everybody could just take a moment briefly